what is the what is the most important thing wow uh, whatever what last night i had this experience of the void um or what people call the void uh and it was uh like beautiful and i had all this beer around it and then i went into it yeah that's the problem that's the problem what's the solution discovering the problem <laughs> so what is the void it's more instructive to find out what the problem is and i can't that was okay you don't you don't see the problem i suppose well, the problem is, is that I'm trying to do anything or to know that, that, that I create the experience of the void and then get wrapped up in it. Like it's something real, but it's. That's exactly right. It's a, the, the experience is a chase. So you're basically chasing an experience. Who cares? So you felt good, big deal. You didn't get anywhere. You came back to who you were. So what's the point? Yeah. Yeah. And that cycle, I'm, it's getting faster for me, so I'm picking up on it quicker. Yes, I can see that. That's all just an experience, too. Absolutely. Uh, any sort of judgment or any sort of um, scorecard keeping or any sort of recognition or evaluation of progress, I mean, pleasure check, it's all, it's all one you do. Pleasure chase, or or an avoidance of pain. Same thing. So I'm about to go on a ten day meditation retreat. Um, you don't believe in the value of those, do you? I mean, it doesn't matter what I believe. What matters where you are. It matters what level of understanding that a person has. It doesn't matter what I believe. No matter what everyone believes, it matters what is the truth. Having has your understanding of the truth changed at all in the last month? You know, it's not about really the understanding of truth. It's about uh, it's about a constant examination and a and a deeper and deeper unlayering of truth in whatever direction one happens to be pursuing in his life. In my direction, my direction, getting to the root of the physical pain in my body, at least in my current moment, the thing. What is the thing that's inside of our head or inside of our being that is constantly judging as good or bad or oh, oh, the mind and condition and, and the mind and conditional the human being has been conditioned by society to categorize things and, and view things through the lens of good and bad and right and wrong And to even give that up is, again, the paradoxical judgment of good and bad, and now I'm being good because I'm... Well, it depends, it depends why someone would give it up. If they're giving it up because they consider it good to give it up, then that's more of the same. If they, if they give it up because they, they see the superfluousness of it and they see that it is untruth, then the giving it up happens all by itself. But the conscious, prescriptive, effortful intentional giving up something is prescriptive it, it is a brawler right it is forced and a thing that is forced 
is it natural? And it's like grabbing a snake from the tail and you get bitten from the side of the head. And if you grab it the other side, you know, you'll get, it'll wrap around from the tail. So it, it, there's always repercussions for things that are done out of force and prescription as opposed to understanding and naturalness and genuineness and inevitability and truth. So I can become aware of the a thing that's offering the prescriptions, trying to do it. Sometimes I can become aware of it. Sometimes I am it. But then there's, if I can look at it from another angle so I can decenter and essentially be aware of all of that happening, what is that thing? You know, it doesn't really matter what it is. You know, there isn't, there isn't enough time to find out what this thing is and that thing is because everyone's time is running out. So it really is about understanding that we are all living on borrowed time. So luxuriating into what is that and what, what is this and what is that um, from an intellectual slash spiritual slash consciousness nonsense perspective. Um, is really a, a reflection that one does not understand that they don't have time. So it really is about getting to the most acute nature of one's problems, to getting to the acute nature of one's pains, and pursuing truth in those immediate directions because they are they are the things that are that are most relevant to that human being at this particular time in their life. You know, and it isn't about you know, floating away from that into this neverland of spiritual jargon. You know, human beings view things as a luxury because they think they have time. Why do we be, why do we get stuck in this illusion that we don't have time and that thing will just continue on for as they've been continuing on, you know, for the last 20, 50, 30 years? Why do we have this illusion? Is it it's, one of the hardest things to do to really get is to really viscerally understand the fact that we're going to die. It's a very difficult place to arrive uh, on a on a visceral level. Uh, those who have near death experiences, um, obviously for them it is easy because they actually experience it. You know, short of something most immediate and in your face, um, the mind doesn't go there, and even if the mind does, the heart doesn't go there. So it is very instinctive to believe that because I had the day before and because I had yesterday and because I have today, then I will have tomorrow. When did you first get this visceral understanding of that you're going to die? Let's say, let's say what I said it was September 4th, 1979. Doesn't do anything. So you don't think there's any value to well it doesn't matter when you when you when you begin a question that way, the point is that you do. So it doesn't matter if I don't if I don't think any value. Are more people waking up to that fact that they're going to die because of all of you seemingly crazy? No, it doesn't you no know, it really doesn't matter. Um people not about people. All about you. Thinking about the world, thinking about people and world peace and all these things are just avoidance. But a lot of people, including myself right now, are reading these things. And one particular, the virus in, in China is like, that is, uh, provoking a lot of fear and for me, it's certainly like now is the time to experience that. But again, that goes into this, there's this thing inside of my head that's saying that this is the right thing to do that to come to this realization that I will die. Hey, what's the question? 
seems like something's going on in terms of signals to wake up. It's not really a question, I guess it's a statement, but me, 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 you know, I think you fully know her. Because right now there's an opportunity to get to the truth of whatever I'm currently experiencing. Yeah, if you feel the opportunity, then the, the truth is uh, what you find yourself doing with the opportunity. With no, with no compulsion to work yourself to do anything. And no target if you don't do anything. I have this I have this part of me that's essentially trying to deceive me. So that I'll always be safe and comfortable. So I'm at a loss here because nothing was no no reason to talk at all. No, it de it depends what arises within the person. It depends what sort of urgency one has. And the urgency of maybe right now is that I'm that we're recording this and we're going to publish it, and so this this nagging. Well, if that's the urgency, then that is like a barrier which is blocking any urgencies that may naturally organically exist that have nothing at all to do with the phone call. It fucked me. Uh, yeah, and there's this fear of the underlying urgencies. And so that, that urgency is just an excuse to not go into those the deeper ones. What you think? Yeah, well, Iggy, what's the fear? The fear that it will be seen and the way that you'd like it to be seen, perhaps? Yeah, I will be able to control my cartoon, my persona. But, yeah. You know, that's, that's sort of when you imprison me self-image. That's, that's it's, it's a very heavy weight, self-image. Where did it come from? Where did it come from? The, I mean, I, now I'm asking, answering that question, which is for myself, I was going to ask, where did this uh, magical fairyland illusion place that life is going to be great and uh, we'll all get to be happy forever come from? And then... It's, well, it, it's a natural, it's a, you know, the, the mind is habituated to search and to seek pleasure. And so and happiness is society's sanctioned form of pleasure and spirituality jumps on board at all the grooms of the whole gang with their chanting and their meditations and their bells and whistles and incense come along you know when Dalai Lama gets on his pulpit and talks about happiness and it's in the water you know everyone is sanctioned and everyone has the permission to seek happiness because it is believed to be the most uh, natural and fruitful pursuit and it is actually the it, it's it's the forbidden suit it, it's it's the way to pain or that is a very very foreign concept that you know in i guess from from my work it's you know one of many foreign concepts which is no surprise um, in both the, the traditional ways of going about things yeah. are all very unnatural. They are all societal. They're all manufactured. They have no basis in reality or truth. And that's what leads to pain. And that's what leads to frustration and anxiety and sorrow and all of these things that people are trying to get away from. It's false, false, false. happiness. I'm sorry. A false expectation of happiness. Well, the belief in happiness as being something that will actually fulfill me.
and true truth is the only sustaining thing. Well, truth is the only thing there is. There is nothing else. What else can there be besides truth? Illusion. But that's not that's not is though. It's manufactured. It doesn't illusion doesn't exist. It is believed in and it is propagated and it is fantasized about, but it, it isn't it it isn't. It is not is, if you understand what I mean. That is So I don't really have anything to say. Um, nothing that is arising. Me, it's just like. Well, the curious thing is, in other podcasts, do you have things to say? Yeah, but I I know which questions you're gonna say. That's a bullshit question too. And most of the questions that are coming up right now are bullshit questions. Okay, so then why in other podcasts? You, how do you reconcile that? What do you think is the truth? Or the why other podcasts you have things to say, and in in these particular podcasts you don't. Because, well, I think there's a certain amount of social compulsion that most people have in order to fill the silence, which obviously you don't. Um, and so that social compulsion brings out something to be said. And yes, I agree that a lot of those things that are said are bullshit. Um, but it's entertaining intellectually, and I like to be entertained intellectually. Um, so then you do, you do those other podcasts is that from the standpoint of entertainment, of intellectualization, what, what is it that you gain from those other podcasts? Building. I don't gain anything from this podcast, but what is it that you gain from that? Well, that, that is, it's like I'm building a tapestry of abstract concepts that allow me to understand the, uh, the, where we are right now, like where we are as a humanity, where we are as a species, where we're going, trying to get understanding. Feel that that is an escape from the most pressing questions of your own life or do you? In some ways it's an escape, but sometimes I do come upon some gems from, from, from that. So I guess the question that I've never asked myself was what are the most pressing questions in my life or what are the most? Well, the most pressing questions of your life are the things that are already happening to you. What are those verses that you find yourself already engaged in without ever having to ask the question? But that's the thing that's for some reason and I can't explain it. That's why I'm doing these podcasts is, is it just fills me up in a way that other things don't. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think that it's requisite to be honest with yourself. You think there are no shades, but you may want to evaluate how honest that statement really is. that
So it goes back to this, this self-image thing. You know, everything sort of does. I mean, this is not a confessional thing, right? This is, it, 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 but it, if everything happens for a reason and there perhaps are no consequences in life, and if one's life intersects with a particular other, um, then there was perhaps a, an effective reason for that that might lead somewhere. Not, not that it should, it did not. Perhaps the answer it does not. But, no, but to go on chases, uh, human beings go on chases, and, 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 well, you know, in the West, they're very intellectual, in the East, they're very wrote and by the book. You know, each has, has his own imprisonment, and, um, you know, the, in the West, in Silicon Valley, that they like to, you know, so they they like to, um, you know, intellectualization is a is a is a very uh, popular medium. You know, how many books did you read, and did you read about stoicism, and do you practice mindfulness, and how many minutes of meditation did you do, and how many retreats did you go on? You know, all of the British silly nonsense, um, because it's considered cultured and proper and progressive, and uh, it, it as if it's some form of a, you know, expedient and. So that's an imprisonment of its own, and the the you know giving oneself the false uh, impression of movement or progress mm-hmm. through the vehicle of of intellectualization and talking to people about concepts uh, and, and and theories and consciousness and all of this jargon that doesn't do anything for anyone um, and. It really is about a human being becoming real and becoming true and discovering, uh, you know, what is it that I want out of life and what are my chases and where am I going? And, and I need, you know, it's about becoming honest and then not, not with absolutely no compulsion that, that that's good. You know, the goodness and the badness is completely a, a false idea. Uh, it, it's, it's truth and truth is not spirituality, spirituality is untrue. Truth is, is it has don't, no denomination, it just is. And that, and that, and that reflects one's DNA, it reflects um, the sort of nature of one's nature. When I ask myself that question, what is it that I truly want? I just has a feel as a hesitancy. Well, if you were in the position to ask that question, it's very perplexing. I think it's more effective, perhaps, with see, you know, what are the empty chases that I'm, yeah, place of the, as but all the other. So you cut out there. I didn't catch the last part. I don't even know what I said. What are the empty chases? Yeah, what are the empty chases that one is imprisoned to? But I mean, in a sense, everything is an empty chase. No, it's not. Everything that is from and out of the mind is an empty chase. Anything that is societal, anything that is spiritual, anything that is intellectual, and since those are the sum total of what modern man is made up of, then you're absolutely right. Everything is an empty chase. And then their answers to that question will become very personal and not really able to abstract out into a coherent theory because that will come from the mind I think that if there's a sincere desire to find one's empty chases it doesn't take long to figure out what those are but we discovered them up though
path uh, found one um the the search for the right way to do it the the the, the best technique so Unless you tell you believe that that technique actually gets you somewhere. And from a mechanical standpoint, can. Things that are mechanical, like hammering a nail, or hammering a computer, yeah, yeah, things that are very mechanical, yes, you, they can be prescribed, and it is a technique. Most things that are... that and how that technique, or technique. So I think our connection is getting um, getting bad here. Um, might be a good time to wrap up unless you have anything to add. Yeah. Yeah, I can't hear you. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this was a great episode with Kapil. If you like it, please find us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, any of the other major podcasting platforms, and go ahead and subscribe and maybe even give it a review. As always, I'm on Twitter at Stuart Alsop, I-I-I. My DMs are open. Would love to hear from you.